So in the contenders bracket, that's Montreal. You know, Montreal has been a team that has been one of the most consistent teams, not only in the East, but in the entire MLS. And Montreal's not really talked much about. Maybe because they're Montreal. But Montreal, they're leading at the Contenders Club with 29 points. They gained three points from another victory this past week in week 25. And Montreal is that team where if, if I'm you, Philly, Montreal is the team that I'm keeping an eye on for the playoffs. Because I because you are a lock for that first seed. I don't believe that there's going to be any team that takes that top seed from you. So now, Philly, you got to be looking at the other Eastern teams. Okay, which team can be the biggest threat to us? How can we not make the same mistake that New England made last season and just think that we're above everybody and nobody's a real threat to us? If you're, if I'm you, Philly, um, mainly ownership, I'm, I'm looking to see, okay, what team that I got to tell my scouting department to do extra film study on. As we head into this playoffs, it'll be Montreal, Philly. Montreal and Cincy. That's another team. It's been tough for them, but they're hanging in there. And in the current MLS standings, Cincy has fallen below the playoff line. And the Easter Conference has just gotten tough out of nowhere. The Easter Conference has gotten tough. Those um, seeds 6 through 10 in the East, oh man, it's going to be a dogfight. We got nine more weeks left. And these remaining nine weeks, that's, uh, from like either the, the sixth or the fifth seed, like the bottom half from... I'll say from the fifth seed to the tenth seed, it's gonna be a battle in the East. So since he's hanging in there, the New York teams, the New York teams are starting to decline at the wrong time of the year. This is not the, you. You don't want to. You don't want to enter the playoffs in a losing slump. This is not the right time for you to be losing. And then you want, and then when, and then when you get in the playoffs, you want to, you know, rely on that to shake that rust off. I just don't think that's a good idea, because the teams that did that last season, the teams that, you know, slumped their way into the playoffs, they didn't really make it far. In NYCFC, you started. You started this time of the year last year, you were playing good. You were on an upward streak. You were moving up this time of the year last year. And that prepared, propelled you to win your championship. But this year is the, to the total opposite because you lost your major coach. You lost a major player. Nick Cushion has done a better job since he first started and that's the, and that's a good thing because a lot of coaches in his shoes they they wouldn't have got it together so fast like the way he did but the thing for you NYCFC you have to find Tati Castellanos replacement and it needs to happen fast um you know, Tiles Magno, he, he played better in week 25 compared to, like, the previous two or three weeks. But I'm just not sure if he wants to be that guy. I'm not sure if he wants to be the man. I just don't see it in him. I, I don't know. So, NYCFC, you got to figure it out. New York Red Bulls, I don't know what the hell is going on with you. Ever since that U.S. Open Cup loss to Orlando, you have been on a downward spiral. I don't know what the hell is going on with you, Red Bulls, but you got to get it together too. You have been relegated. You're, a, you're an elite last week. 
you've been relegated to the contenders. And it looks like you're on track to continue to relegate if you don't get it right. Now, Salt Lake, impressive win against Seattle. But Salt, Salt Lake is just like last year, inconsistent. You really don't know what Salt Lake team you're going to get week in and week out. Some some weeks, Salt Lake look like they can be a title contender. They look like they can be the best team in the league. And then some weeks, they look like they're the worst team in the league. Minnesota. Minnesota's a, a sneaky team. Because there's sometimes you you watching a the match, they look like a team that can't score. And then late in the game, they come up with like two goals. Minnesota's been doing this all season long. It's like early in the game, they start off flat. And then late in the game, like when it's like 20 minutes, like in the last 15, 20 minutes, they get some extra boost of energy out of nowhere. It's like, where the hell did this team come from? Achievers. You know, I already, you already know how, what I believe about Columbus in Monologue 94. If you haven't heard Monologue 94, go ahead and listen to that because I am a believer in Columbus. Well, Columbus is right where they should be. The, the top seed in the Achievers Club with 19. That's where Columbus should be. You know, Portland, you're not going to win every match. Well, Portland, you cannot lose any more matches. Because in the MLS standings, you have 33 points. You are below the playoff line. You can't afford to lose any more matches now. But look at these next four. These next four teams. Miami, New England, LA Galaxy, Orlando. All four of these teams won. Elevating themselves out of the Strugglers Club. And also putting themselves in playoff position in each conference. LA Galaxy is now above the playoff line. Miami, Orlando, above the playoff line. New England's not above the playoff line yet, but they're right there. They're either the eighth or ninth seed. New England's the eighth seed. Right above Cincy. So, you know, uh, after the U.S. Open Cup, after New England lost to NYCFC in the U.S. Open Cup, I gave up on New England. I thought their season was done. They were losing games and losing players at the same time. And they weren't replacing these their well-seasoned veterans with experienced guys. So I thought New England was done, so I stopped watching them. But there is something that Bruce Arena is doing. And whatever it is he's doing, it's working. Which goes to remind us, or especially remind me, because those of you who've been watching the MLS since the 90s and the early 2000s, you already know. Never doubt the greatness of Bruce Arena. He can turn a roster of nobodies. I mean, guys who people barely know. And still have, give them a chance to make the playoffs. And another difference, they still have Gustavo Bo. And he was he, he was the key guy in that team being at the top of the league. Of course, in addition with a lot of the other good players that they had before they left to Europe. But Gustavo Bo was a really key centerpiece of that New England team. And they still have him. So you have Bruce Arenas, who is the Nick Saban, the Bill Belichick, the Steve Kerr of the MLS. And you still have a well-seasoned veteran and Gustavo Bo. So, New England, you now have my attention. Bruce Arenas, 
he is a great coach. And now I'm going to go back to watching New England to see how they end this season. Because it would be nice. It's good for the MLS when New England and New York is in the playoffs. It's really good for the MLS. It really is. You have a big sports town or a big sports region in New England. Then you have an- another big sports region in New York City. You got another big sports region in Philly. All of them making the playoffs. Another big sports region in Atlanta. Well, I'm not sure if that's a big sports region when it comes to sports in general, but it's a big city. But anyway, it's just good when big sports towns make the playoffs. Lastly, the Strugglers Club. Atlanta, Nashville, Colorado. They could be promoted to Achievers Club if they all win next week. Seattle at six. They're down there with San Jose. Toronto. Toronto has this star next to its name because it has been promoted from the zero and below club. You know, it's one thing to be in the strugglers club, but then it's another thing to be a struggler and have no points. This is where you have Chicago, DC United, Charlotte, Houston, Kansas City. All five of those coaches, except D.C. United, should be on the hot seat in those cities. We know Rain Rooney's not. I mean, that's, that's a new coach. They hired him during the season. Charlotte's coach is still an interim coach. So Chicago, Charlotte, Houston, Kansas City, those coaches should be on the hot seat. Now. Out of these five teams, because of the good graces, the graces of the soccer point system, Chicago still has a chance to make the playoffs. Chicago put itself in a hole by losing against Philly. If anything, it should have been a a tie. Even a a scoreless draw would have been safe for, for Chicago because in the Soccer point system, even if two teams don't score in a game, both of them still get one point, which I believe should not happen, but it is what it is. So, in summary, the teams that were promoted, uh, Salt Lake, Minnesota, Miami, New England, LA Galaxy, Orlando, Toronto. Salt Lake and Minnesota joined the Contenders Club. Miami, New England, LA Galaxy, Orlando, they joined the Achievers Club. Toronto got out of the zero and below club, but they are still a struggler. The team was relegated, Nashville. But they also have an opportunity to get promoted next week with a win. Also, Atlanta, Colorado, they can get promoted to Achievers with a win. Uh, To Contenders, Columbus, a score, draw, or a win. And they're up to contenders. Portland just needs a win. Two elites. Montreal just needs a score draw or a win. New York Rebels needs a win. In danger of relegation. Cincinnati, Salt Lake, Minnesota can fall to achievers if they lose. Miami, New England, LA Galaxy, Orlando, Vancouver, they can fall to strugglers if they lose. And the team that can fall to a zero and below if they lose, Toronto, San Jose. So that is all for week 25 review. And the point system, the Aku point system, the MLS point system, and the standings and where the teams are. Remember, this is the home stretch. And this is the time where the boys, I mean, this is the time where the men separate themselves from the boys.